I think primarily uh, because of the internet in particular, the way that we access information is kind of comes with a much broader scope attached to it. I mean, it, when we had radio in the 19, you know, 20s, you know, that that certainly opened the world up to to new ways of communicating. And then when we had television in the late 40s and early 50s, um, suddenly we're beginning to gravitate even more away from text sources mm -hmm. to media that's disseminated by other means. And our level of text literacy begins to decline quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, especially when even the average newspaper at that point begins to be written on more of like a fourth, fifth, sixth grade level. Mm -hmm. um, as a result, you know, technology is a wonderful tool um, for inclusion in, in classes. I mean, you have access to all kinds of things. You know, you have podcasts and, um, you know, you have internet video such as YouTube and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, students certainly have, you know, a, a plethora of places to get information from. Unfortunately, they've had to develop new kinds of literacy to make use of it, and not those those kind those different media literacies don't always um, complement each other. You know, a student may be very literate with you know finding podcasts or you know um, you know YouTube things or whatever, and, and making use of them. But when faced with another kind of source such as a text source or something like that, mm -hmm. may find himself or herself at a complete loss. And when, and when those students are asked to produce a written text, which, you know, when our discipline is kind of the be-all, end-all of things, it really, uh, even, even with all the media literacy, they still may not be able to produce something that... Um, is what it needs to be. I mean, the, yeah. the quality, because of their lack of text literacy and their reliance on all these other types of literacy, mm -hmm. they may have lots of information, but disseminating it now, yeah. synthesizing new information, um, drawing connections, mm -hmm. um, all those kinds of things, they may find themselves sorely limited, um, which is a, which is a particular challenge. So the you know, short answer to a to a long or long answer to a short question, the technology is great, but if that's all there is, then it's essentially useless. When I mean, as a, as, a, as a public in this country, and in fact worldwide, we don't rely on the written word in the same way that we once did. Mm -hmm. um, we have, at this point, numerous alternatives, and because they don't really use the written word, very much um, along the way when it comes time to produce that mm -hmm. kind of thing. You know, they're expected to go write a paper or, you know, do a, um, you know, do some sort of analysis or, you know, um, whatever. They don't have those tools. Ask them to make a, go make a video, they could do it, mm -hmm. a lot of them. They, they, they have, you know, that, um, <coughs> that, that kind of skill. Uh, they, they've seen it done, they've done it a lot of times themselves, um, but when you ask them to produce text, suddenly there's a falling off of ability. And I'm not going to say that's across the board because yeah. we do have some very capable, you know, student writers out there who yeah. are definitely worth their salt. But I think on a large scale, you know, when it comes to, to the broader canvas, I think our students are coming to colleges and universities much less equipped in that area than they ever used to be. Well, one of the things that I try to do in the classroom, and this is going to sound totally old school, and there are probably lots of people who would disagree with my method, I try to engage them strictly in text. Mm -hmm. I mean, if I try to use other things, like media, you know, um, video and things like that. Um, I mean, it's all well and good, but it takes the emphasis off where it needs to be, and it's not helping them develop the skills that they need to do, the things that they need to do with text. Um, now, I might show a video or something like that and then have them write about it on occasion. Um, but 
just as they come to these classes ill-equipped to produce text, many of them can't really deal with it um, in terms of reading and interpretation and those kinds of things either. They, they haven't had a lot of that exposure. I've had you know, a number of my students say, well, I've never read an entire book before. Yeah. You know, which astonishes yeah. me. <laughs> um, not, you know, not that I'm an elitist anything, but you know, when I was a kid, people read books, and it, it wasn't just the, the elite few <coughs> who you know were um, snobbish and highbrow and all that kind of stuff. You know, everybody read some kind of book. You know, we. Um, but a lot of kids now, once they graduate, you know, sixth grade, and they get away from the book drives and getting the gold stars for reading the most books and all that kind of stuff. They may not be asked to read anything substantial the rest of their high school years. Well, Wikipedia has its ups and downs. Now, by its own admission, Wikipedia is not a scholarly, reviewed, um, reliable source. I mean, their disclaimer pretty much says it all. Hey, we're not reliable. Um, one of the cool things about Wikipedia, though, is that pretty much anybody who's interested in a topic can research it out, present their findings to what's essentially a community of learners. Mm -hmm. Now, if it's approached with that in mind, that this is not, you know, peer edited, this is not, you know, you don't have Big Brother editing everything like you would for something like Britannica or mm -hmm. World Book or whatever. If you approach it, you know, as, as a learning community, it can definitely be a springboard to other things, mm -hmm. especially if you want to read what they have, go track down their sources, um, and use it kind of as a means to an end. Um, I think the danger in Wikipedia is students who think it's the authority. Mm -hmm. um, here it is. We have this big magic card catalog all in one place. We can find anything we want. There it is. All we have to do is copy it down and, and, and use it in our, in our paper. Um, that's the wrong approach. But then again, that's, that's the wrong approach to any reference work, mm -hmm. um, whether it's credible or you know, reviewed or not. Um, but I think, it, unlike some of my colleagues who don't think very much of it, I think it has some potential. Yeah. Because it really well, at does. At least as a, like a starting point. Yeah. yeah well, and, and just, did, you know, again, giving students the opportunity to do their research and present it, you know, to a forum of learners. Because anybody who comes to Wikipedia wants to learn something. Um, and having the ability to exchange those ideas is, is wonderful as long as you approach it for what, what it is yeah. and use it as a springboard for other things. Yeah. 